Hello and welcome to our number talk. Today we are looking at the expression 20 times 16. What we do in a number talk is we use mental math. That means no paper, no pencil to try to figure this expression out. And then we look at all the different ways we could have done it together. So before we go any further, go ahead and do that. Pause the video, figure out 20 times 16 when you have your answer. Unpause it, we'll look at all of our strategies together. So we could have started with multiplying by multiples of 10, 100, or 1,000. This is a fantastic strategy to use whenever you see anything. So our 20 here is a multiple of 10. So what we do is whenever we see these zeros, we know there are some shortcuts. So we think 2 times 16, what we do is we just drop that zero for a second. We think, what is 2 times 16? Well, that's going to make 32. Now what we do is we bring that zero back in, we just slap it on the end, and we're going to get 320. So multiplying by multiples of 10, 100, 1,000 should be fairly simple. You just take your, your non-zero digits, multiply them, and then you add any zeros at the end. We also could use the distributive property. So this is the property that lets us break apart one of our factors into two add-ins just to make it a little bit easier to multiply. So you see we're going to take our 20. I want to break this up into a 10 plus 10. And that's going to give me some partial products that should be a little bit easier to multiply, or a little bit easier to add. So I'm going to multiply 10 times 16 instead of 20, because I'm going to break it in half there. So that's easy. That's 16 with a 0, 160. And then I've got my other 10 times 16. I'm going to add those two together. So that's going to give me another 160. 160 and 160 still gets us back to our answer of 320. We could also use the distributive property to take a look at our 16. So let's take our 16 and let's cut that in half. So we're going to make that an 8 plus 8. And then we're just going to distribute out that 20 and multiply by both add-ins to get us some really simple partial products. So that's going to be 20 times 8. There's your 160. And then we're going to get another 20 times 8. And that's another 160. You add those two together, and guess what? We're always going to come up with 320. That's not changing in this video. Slightly different here. But what we could do is we could take our 16, we could break it apart in place value. So look at 16 like it's expanded form. 10 plus 6. We're still going to take that 20, multiply it by both add-ins to get our partial products. So 20 times 10. Well, let's use that strategy of multiplying by multiples of 10, 100, 1,000. Multiply your two non-zero digits or two non-digit numbers. 2 times 1 is 2. And I've got one, two zeros, so there we go. I've got 200 plus 20 times my 6. I'm going to use that same strategy. 2 times 6 is 12. I've got one zero to add, 120. So 200 and 120, that's pretty simple to add. Still gets us up to 320. Doubling and halving works if you have at least one of your factors that is even. So we're going to take our 20. We're going to cut it in half. So that's going to go down to 10, and that's why we've got this gray box here. So if you take one of your factors and cut it in half, in order to maintain a balanced expression, you've got to take your other factor, and you guessed it. We're going to double it up to 32. So you double one, you have the other. That's why I've got two 16s here. Look at that. 10 times 32. Super easy. That's 32 times 1 equals 32. Add that 0. We've got 320. We can also double in half, but we could go ahead and double our 20 instead of cutting it in half. So let's double our 20. That's going to get us 40, because I've got two of my 20s right here, which means if I take my 20 and double it up to 40, I've got to take my 16, cut that in half in order to maintain a balanced expression. So that's why this 8 is grayed out at the bottom. So 4 times 8 is going to get me 32. Add that 0, and I've got 320. We can also look at the associative property. 
So this is our grouping property. And what this does is this lets us take our factors, and if we can get it to three or more factors, we can kind of rearrange the groups. So I'm going to take my 20, and I'm going to reimagine that as 4 times 5. So there's my 4 times 5, and I'm going to multiply that by 16. So I've got three factors now, and what this lets me do is this lets me rearrange these groups. So instead of four groups of 5, the associative property just says, you know what, I'm going to shift that. I'm going to shift the parentheses. I want five groups of 16, which is what I have right here. I've got five groups of 16. One, two, three, four, five. So this five groups of 16, that's going to give me 80. And so all I need to do is I've got my four groups of 80. I'm going to skip count 160, 240, and 3. 20. We can also look at our 20 times 16, and we could, instead of breaking apart that 20, let's break apart that 16. And let's look at our 16 as a 4 times 4. And so now I've got three factors, and so I'm going to reorder them again. I'm going to put my 20 times 4, I'm going to shift those parentheses, so I want 20 groups of 4, but you know what? I don't really want 20 groups of 4. I want to flip the order. I want 4 groups of 20. That's what this commutative property does. The associative property lets me make new groups. The commutative property lets me switch the order. I just want 4 groups of 20, which is what you see right here. And then I want to do one more because I want to have 4 groups of 4 groups of 20. And that's what I've got right here. Four groups of four groups of 20. So once again, I'm going to get back up to my 80. And I'm going to skip count by 84 times. 160, 240, 3, 20. So those are just the ways that I can think of to solve 20 times 16. If you could find another way, that's fantastic. Go ahead and drop that as a comment on the video. Teachers, if you would like a copy of the slide deck for your own use in the classroom, you can find it on my website, 5minutemath.net.